Do y'all remember iPad OS 16? Yeah, trust me, it's important to the... Holy... Um... Yeah, I, I probably should have learned that this wasn't a good idea. Do y'all remember iPad OS 16? Stay with me here, it's important to the video. iPad OS 16 had literally, no joke, one new feature that was exclusive to the iPad, and that was Stage Manager. Now, Stage Manager is a cool feature and all, but the lack of any other features sealed the fate of iPadOS 16 as lackluster, disappointing, and forgettable. Now, macOS Sequoia is kind of similar, except with two differences. First, instead of there being one new feature, there are a whopping, get ready for this, three new features. Like, look at this, one, two, three, absolutely insane stuff. And the second difference is that even with only having three new features, there still happens to be a boatload of issues. And I use the term issues carefully. By issues, I don't mean bugs, because all of the major bugs have been squashed, while all of the minor bugs are, well, minor, insignificant. What I mean by issues are fundamental oversights for the features, which make them seriously annoying to use. You know what, I'll stop yapping, let me explain. Now, one of the new features in macOS Sequoia is window snapping. Finally! Oh my god, it's about damn time! Window snapping is a great feature on its own, but it has two major issues. The first one is that if I maximize a window, then I close that window and reopen it again, it'll return back to its original position. Personally, I think if you maximize a window, then close and reopen it again, it should stay maximized until you move it around. There is a workaround for this though. Once, just once, drag the edges of your window to the borders of your screen, like a caveman. And this should resolve the issue for that specific app. The second problem is a much bigger deal though. Window snapping conflicts with another feature, Stage Manager. What Stage Manager does is it takes all of your open apps and it pushes them to the left side of the screen so that you can focus on one specific window. It's a good feature, but let me show you the problem. Now I've got Stage Manager on and here's my maximized window using the workaround I just showed. Now, if I close out of this window and I reopen it, you'll see the window shifts to the right side. This is intentional. The window shifted to the right so that you can still get a view of all your open apps. But here's the thing, window snapping doesn't seem to know that. If I say I want to tile two windows side by side, it covers up the recent app section. This same behavior also happens when you try to maximize a window. So it doesn't seem like window snapping was built with Stage Manager in mind. So now I'm left with confusion. I don't know what's right. Are my windows supposed to cover the recent app section, or are they supposed to leave a space for it? I don't know, and it doesn't seem like Apple knows either. So now what can you do? Well, one thing you could do is to go into your Mac system settings, click on desktop and dock, scroll down to the stage manager section, and turn off show recent apps in stage manager. This will make your windows always fill the whole screen, getting rid of any of that confusion. But there's a side effect of even if you just want to see your recent apps, you're going to have to constantly move your mouse over to the left side of the screen. Now, if that doesn't work for you, then your two other options are either stop using Stage Manager or stop using Apple's window snapping option. If you stop using Stage Manager, Apple's window snapping feature will work as expected. And if you stop using Apple's window snapping, you're going to have to turn to alternatives like Rectangle or Better Snap Tool. Personally, I can't speak for the Rectangle app, but I know that Better Snap Tool, which is paid, has a section where you can only say, I want the window to fill the right side of the screen to account for Stage Manager. So it's honestly a little embarrassing that a third-party app works better with Apple Stage Manager than another one of Apple's features. It's like window snapping and Stage Manager are exes, but they're forced to be together because they're co-workers, which can set the plot of a really good storybook, but this is an operating system. I don't want that. Next up is iPhone mirroring, and I'll give Apple the credit they deserve. They absolutely cooked on this feature. It's all wireless with fluid 60 hertz animations, audio pass-through, dynamic island support, easy navigation, it's amazing. This kind of seamlessness between products is something that Apple's known for, and so the fact that they're improving on it every single year is amazing, and I love it. It's just that it all falls apart when you try to use continuity camera. If you've been living under a rock for the past two years, continuity camera is a feature that allows you to use your iPhone as a webcam for your Mac giving you some of the best call quality, period. But in previous years, if I wanted to show something that's on my phone while I'm on a video call on my Mac, I can't because my phone's recording me. So surely, this seems like a perfect opportunity for iPhone mirroring to step in and save the day. Seriously? 
I guess Apple must have thought about the fact that continuity camera and iPhone mirroring would have drained your iPhone's battery too fast, or would have consumed too much processing power. But it is such a missed opportunity. It's like, it's like Romeo and Juliet, they're two star-crossed lovers, so they poison themselves in the end, causing them to both die. That's great for a Shakespeare play, but this is an operating system! I don't want that! Phew. Okay, so surely, it can't get much worse than this, right? Okay, fine. Allow for one month, I guess. Wait, so then it's gonna ask me the same thing next month, and then the same thing the following month, and then the same thing the month after that. Oh, come on! This pop-up has recently been making waves on the technology side of the internet. It's a pop-up that says, this app can access and record your computer screen, do you want to continue to allow? So for a pop-up like this, you'd expect there to be an option in system settings that says, I want this app to be able to record my screen whenever it wants, I don't care. But no, every month you'll be required to click this pop-up and say allow for another month, and you'll be asked the same thing, the next month, the month after that, and the month after that, it's going to get annoying. Like just sitting there clicking allow, 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 but it's even worse for the IT professional. Because if they manage hundreds of Macs every single day, the last thing they're going to want to do is click allow, allow, allow for all these hundreds of computers. It's going to be hell. And this open system settings button does nothing except for open system settings. Now this pop-up actually used to be worse. Before Mac OS Sequoia Beta 6, Apple wanted this to be a weekly pop-up. Can you imagine, 52 times a year, you're gonna sit there clicking allow, 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 no! So it's good that Apple made this a monthly pop-up, but that doesn't fix the core issue. What I think Apple should do is keep this prompt on for the unknowing user so that they can improve their security. But for the user who knows exactly what they're getting into when they download a new app, they should have the option to say, I want this app to record my screen whenever it wants. Everyone should at least have this option, especially the IT professionals. And you know what Apple did that's related to this recently? In previous versions of macOS, if you tried to open an app that wasn't notarized, it would block you from doing so. And the way to open that app was to either right click or control click and say open. Pretty simple, it's not ideal, but it's not necessarily painful. Apple's removed that functionality in macOS Sequoia. If you want to open an app that isn't notarized, you have to go to System Settings, scroll down to Privacy and Security, and then scroll all the way down, click Allow, and then click Allow again. This prevents someone who doesn't know about these steps from even being able to open the app. And the irony is actually insanely funny. Remember how Apple used to make those funny I'm a Mac, I'm a PC ads back in the day? Well, take a look at this one they made. Hello, I'm a Mac. Mac has issued a salutation, cancel or allow. Allow, and I'm a PC. You're returning Mac salutation, cancel or allow? Allow. Okay, what gives? Mac is asking a question, cancel or allow? Allow. What the PC's antivirus is trying to do to PC is exactly what my Mac is trying to do to me. It feels controlling, annoying, and unnecessary. The world could have been perfectly fine without these two changes. Sorry I'm not showing my face in this part, I'm recording it a bit late, but what could you do for now? Well, obviously the first thing you can do is wait until macOS Sequoia officially releases. It is very much possible at this point that Apple can push out updates to fix these three things. If macOS Sequoia does release and they don't fix these things, and you also don't care about any of the new stuff in macOS Sequoia, we're talking about stuff like new iMessage improvements, math notes, the amazing new wallpapers, the passwords app, if you don't care about really any of that stuff, then I'd suggest hold off, stay on macOS Sonoma. And you can try to stay on macOS Sonoma for as long as possible by going into system settings and turning off automatic updates. And I don't say this lightly because usually I'm the first person to say, go ahead, update right now, it's perfect, do it ASAP. But this time, updating to macOS Sequoia may actually give more harm than benefit. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Also comment down below if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!